China just shocked the world with the Shanghai Tower skyscraper. And trust me, it's more than just your average tall building. This thing is a glass giant that soars 632 meters or 2,073 feet into the clouds, making it the second tallest building on the planet. This architecture is a symbol of China's economic might, a showcase of sustainable design, and a hub for business and leisure. So, have you ever wondered how on earth they built this incredible skyscraper and what's in store for its towering future? I know I have. The Vision and Planning So imagine this, Shanghai in the 80s. It wasn't the bustling financial district we know today. In fact, it was relatively underdeveloped, just kind of hanging out by the Hangpu River. But here's where the story takes a turn. In the 80s, the Chinese government decided to designate it as a special investment zone. So what happened next? Well, rapid development, of course. Fast track to 2006, the Shanghai municipal government threw open the gates for an international bidding contest. Who was behind this winning design? None other than the American architectural firm Gensler. So after a few years of planning, it was time to roll up those sleeves and get to work. The Building Process Shanghai's got a bit of a soil problem. See, it's sitting on this soft, mushy ground thanks to the clay and silt that make up most of the city's foundation. It's like trying to build a house on a giant sponge, not really ideal for stability. With this type of soil, buildings start to sink or tilt, which is never a good look for your cityscape. Now, Shanghai has some cool tricks up its sleeve to tackle this challenge. First off, they go deep, like really deep. They use deep foundation techniques, digging down to more stable layers of soil or even bedrock, and that's like planting your building on solid ground. Then there's ground improvement. They beef up that soft soil with methods like compaction and reinforcement, making it stronger. Lastly, they've invested in some serious flood control tech, including drainage tunnels and floodgates to keep the water at bay. So to get this thing off the ground, they use something called the slip forming process for the core of the skyscraper. It's kind of like building from the inside out. They constantly poured concrete into a mold that moved up as the tower grew, giving it a strong and steady core. Think of it kind of like icing a cake, but on an enormous scale the size of a skyscraper. They faced some real head scratchers during construction too. First off, that soft soil we talked about earlier was a gigantic freaking pain. They had to come up with innovative ways to anchor the tower securely. Then there was the whole earthquake thing. Shanghai is no stranger to tremors, so they had to make sure the tower could sway safely. But hey, they managed to complete the tower ahead of schedule. The moment we were all waiting for, reaching the final height and placing that crown structure on top. The builders worked tirelessly to get this beauty to its full 632 meters or 2,073 foot height, and when they did, it was a monumental achievement. Now, here's where things get seriously cool. The installation of that mind-boggling 120 degree twisting glass facade. Imagine trying to fit together thousands of glass panels, each at a slightly different angle. But when it was all in place, it created that mesmerizing twisted effect, making the Shanghai Tower a true architectural marvel. Sustainable Design and Environmental Impact One of the cool things about the Shanghai Tower is its double-paned glass facade. It's like having a built-in thermos for a skyscraper. Those two layers of glass act as insulation, keeping the building cozy in the winter and cool in the summer. That means less need for heating and air conditioning, which equals major energy savings. They didn't just build a tall tower, they created awesome public spaces too. I'm talking about glass atriums and sky gardens galore. These areas not only give people a chance to enjoy some greenery and natural light, but also reduce the need for artificial lighting and ventilation. It's like bringing in a piece of nature into the concrete jungle. Now, <laughs> talk about being resourceful. The Shanghai Tower harnessed the power of the wind with its built-in wind turbines too. They generate electricity to help power the building, making it a bit more self-sufficient. And they didn't stop there either. Rainwater recycling systems collect and reuse rainwater for things like irrigation and flushing toilets. 
it's all about being water wise and energy efficient. Oh, and guess what? The Shanghai Tower didn't just talk the talk, it walked the walk. It earned the prestigious LEED Platinum certification, which is like the gold medal of green building. It means the tower meets high environmental standards and is a shining example of a sustainable design. So not only is it a stunning piece of architecture, but it's also a sustainability superstar. Okay, let's start with the elevators. These things are like rockets in a building. Mitsubishi really did some magic here. You hop in, you press a button, and pff, you are soaring up faster than you can say skyscraper. Now, once you've zoomed up, you reach this mind-boggling observation deck at a whopping 562 meters or 1,843 feet. The view from up there is unreal. It's like you're on top of the world. You can see the whole city, the river winding through it, and all the iconic buildings. It's definitely a view you're never going to forget. But here's the cool part. There are public spots where you can hang out, tons of restaurants for some fancy dining, cafes for a quick coffee fix, and even stores to do some shopping. It really is like a one-stop shop for all of your tower needs. Challenges and Controversies Building and maintaining the Shanghai Tower was no pocket change either. We're talking about billions of dollars here. Constructing this colossal beauty was like emptying out a bank vault, and keeping it tip top is an ongoing expense. But hey, when you're aiming for the sky, it comes with a little bit of a hefty price tag. You'd think everyone would be lining up to rent office spaces in such an iconic skyscraper, right? Well, not exactly. The tower faced some head-scratching moments when it came to filling those swanky offices. Competition in the business world is tough, and convincing companies to set up shop is a little difficult. So let's talk about design woes. Sometimes the best laid plans can hit a snag, and the Shanghai Tower had its fair share of those design hiccups. Some of the unique twists and turns in its structure resulted in unusable floor space. Imagine having a really cool-looking room in your house that you can't really use. That's kind of what happened here. And last but not least, we can't forget the infamous Tofu Building nickname. Sadly, the Shanghai Tower had some water leakage issues that didn't sit well with the public. It earned a reputation as a Tofu Building due to its perceived weakness, which isn't the kind of fame any structure really dreams of. But hey, every star has its rough patches. Future Prospects Shanghai Tower stands tall and proud as a symbol of China's economic might. It's like a shining beacon that says, hey world, we're a force to be reckoned with. This tower is a testament to China's growth and ambition on the global stage. The Shanghai Tower has the potential to be more than just a skyscraper. It could become a buzzing financial hub, attracting businesses from all corners of the globe. Time will definitely play a big role in its future success or challenges. The Shanghai Tower saga is far from its final chapter though. So let us know what your thoughts are on this in the comments section below.